thrilled to have you here today and so thrilled to be talking about this wonderful organization. For people who aren't familiar with what the Autism Society is, fill us in a little bit on what it is that you guys do and what your mission is. Sure. The Autism Society of America is actually the oldest national autism organization. We were founded in 1965 by a group of parents who, at the time, um, when they found out their child had autism, uh, were denied even access to a public education for their child. Uh, since that time, we have grown to be the nation's largest grassroots organization. We serve over a million people a year. Um, we have 107 affiliates throughout the country. Um, and our overall mission is to help people who have autism today by increasing their ability and maximizing their ability to uh, be self-sufficient and independent and, um, and, and, and have a high quality of life uh, with a high level of dignity. So unlike some other organizations nationally, we're helping people today who have autism uh, advance through a positive future. Well, and I think it's a lovely, lovely mission. And, and you certainly are a large organization, as you said, what, 105 different? 107, 107 affiliates, both, you know, including that number of state and local affiliates, yes. Okay. And, um, and again, started by parents, which is a really wonderful thing. So you've got a great pedigree. Um, and for people who don't know, who are sitting there and thinking, okay, uh, it's, we certainly have seen the logo, but how is it that they can access you and learn more about what it is exactly that you guys do? Well, since this is Skype, they're hearing that the best way is to go to our uh, website at www.autism-society.org. And we've got it up, actually up on the screen for them as well, so they're getting a visual as well. <laughs> uh, and, and, and our website um, could also hook, uh, they, could, they could find out information about uh, if there's a local uh, Autism Society affiliate in their community. Uh, we also have what's called Autism Source, the nation's largest database of information and referral sources for uh, help with people uh, who need assistance and support. Um, and they also could call our contact number, and the phone number is, in, is on our website, um, where we have um, seven day a week um, from nine in the morning to nine at night uh, Eastern time, uh, except on the weekends we go from nine to six o'clock Eastern time where we have uh, operators and trained uh, staff uh, answering calls and uh, helping people uh, with their journey on autism. Um, right. Again, and again, we serve, you know, we're proud that we are uh, very strong in helping families, helping professionals, and particularly helping individuals who live with autism. Great. And, and you are now the president of the Autism Society of America, is that correct? Yes, that is. And what are your credentials? Why did this become uh, the job that you're currently filling? What 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 uniquely qualifies you for this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're an autism parent. I do know that. I have a son who's 26, who today is starting his second semester at Marshall University. Wow. Major um, in history. Um, and um, my, my experience was actually, I've always been involved with nonprofits, but I was involved with the United Way for over 25 years. And um, I, I just felt that um, I, I could add some value to the autism discussion and helping improve life uh, with people for people with autism. I saw what my son went through. I saw what my wife and I and, and uh, my ch other children went through in, in, in our journey with Evan. And um, just decided that if I can make life a little simpler and a little easier for people, that would be great. I also saw that uh, so many services that are provided through government and others are, are very well-meaning, but they're not provided in a way that uh, really aims to uh, say, how are we going to improve someone's life? You know, how how is this service going to help this, this individual uh, be more self-sufficient, be more independent? Uh, uh, how do we get there? So I, uh, I thought I could add that, and I was blessed to be asked uh, two years ago almost to be the president of this organization, which uh, to me is the highlight of my career. Well, it's absolutely wonderful. And I want to talk more about those individual services. We're going to take a short break. But when we come back, I'm going to ask you to talk about specific programs that you guys have and 
excuse me, specific ways in which you, you, you know, you talk about the people who you serve and let's get down to the nitty gritty about how you serve and, and, and some of the wonderful things that you guys have going on because it really is exemplary and I want people to know about that. But we're going to take a short break and we're going to be back more with Scott Baddish from the Autism Society of America after these messages. Welcome back. We're here right now with Scott Baddish, president of the Autism Society of America. And we were talking before the break about some of the different services. Uh, and you had mentioned several times that the people you serve, you're very interested in helping the people you serve. And how exactly, because there's many different ways that you guys uh, provide services, what exactly do you do? And, and give us some specific examples so that people can know how they might get uh, some help and support from your organization? We, uh, the first thing is that behind all our services and everything we do is a strong respect for the dignity of the individual who, who has autism. And everything we do is aimed at educating to the best we can uh, the parent, the individual, the professional, so that they make the decision that's best for them. So you will never see us saying, uh, this is the best service for your son or daughter or, or you as an individual. We'll say, here's what's available, here's the pluses and minuses, but at the end of the day, you decide. Yeah. And to that end, we, we a key service we provide both on a national level and at all our affiliates is the ability of provision of information. Um, anywhere from a parent who learned this morning that their child was diagnosed with autism, to a, uh, a older adult who has a son who's an adult, um, and the older adult that the parent can no longer care for their son. How do we help them? So we do a tremendous amount of talking to people, helping them understand autism, understand the service system, um, and we also are dealing with crisis. When a family's in crisis, how do we help them um, so that they can get out of crisis, but also how they uh, don't get put in crisis again? We also help a lot with transition. Um, we all know that in everyone's life, including the life of a person with autism, there are stages of autism uh, from from you know from birth to getting to high school, to getting to elementary school to get to middle school, high school, and life beyond that. So we're helping people prepare for that. We do a lot of support programs uh, where parents sit around, uh, professionals sit around, individuals with autism sit around and see that there's this community that's out there to help them. Uh, we have a national conference that's the largest uh, national autism conference in the nation where uh, all those individuals could come and, and learn uh, new ways to do things, learn the newest uh, research that's out there as far as treatment and services. And then we also do a tremendous amount of advocacy, uh, both at the local, I mean, both at the state and national level, uh, advocating for the needs of those we serve, uh, trying to make uh, life better, easier, more dignified for every person we serve. Um, and, and I guess the last thing we would do is is we, te we try to create an environment in this community that it's okay to be autistic. Uh, that's a new the tagline we, we're going to be coming out with soon that suggests that, um, you know, that, that having autism, having a child with autism, it's okay. We'll get people through it. But more importantly, there's such high value in the life of a person with autism, and we want to celebrate that. So we do a lot of the promotion of a positive image of people with autism in this country. Which is really important right now. I, you know, I know we were all devastated by some of the events that happened at the end of the last year, and uh, there were a lot of questions were raised about the face of autism and what autism means. And, and I think it's really important to all of us to get quality information out there and to see that autism is not something to be afraid of uh, or to have any kind of a negative attachment to. Uh, and I, I'm sure that, you know, uh, you guys uh, were devastated by some of the things that happened. You're uh, an East Coast kind of person. And uh, <laughs> and uh, it's it, w the news was shocking and dismaying how it was being linked with autism. Uh, so I appreciate that you're working hard to put a different face on autism as well. Um, I want to go back and talk a little bit about, because so many people, Scott, when they are on this journey, they find themselves at some point feeling as if they are completely alone. And um, 
and you really uh, provide information in a format um, and support in a format that pretty much anybody could access. So for, for somebody who's feeling alone and we gave out the website and we'll give it out again, if somebody calls into that number, what kind of help and support can they expect? It, it just, the, 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 I think you hit the best thing. Uh, that they're not alone. Yeah. That will help them. We may not be able to answer their question the way they would hope we could answer it. But um, what we try to do is when someone calls us for the first time, we like that call to be the first call of a long relationship. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I met on a blind date 30 years ago, <laughs> 31 years ago. And that first call was how I always, you know, started a relationship that's lifelong. Yeah. And we'll on until we both die. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what we want the call to be here, that that we're here. And you may not call us every day. You may not call us every year. But when you need help, we're going to be there for you. And the second thing is that for the person that's alone, both as an individual with autism, a parent, uh, a brother or a sister, we want we want to make sure that they know they have a friend in us, that we're, we're not going to be someone who says they're doing something right or wrong. We're not going to be judgmental, but we're going to respect their dignity more than anything else. And we want that person to know that when they, they interact with one of our affiliates, uh, it's going to be like going to a social group with friends, um, that, that they will see that uh, there are others who have gone through what they went through, that they're not alone in this journey, that others will help them. Uh, others will hold their hands. But uh, when you when you we do surveys and research on our call center and, and almost everyone says beyond the, the ability of answering for help, the best thing they got from us was a sense of someone was out there to help them. And that's yeah, yeah. that's what we want to do. It's really important. Uh, you also mentioned that you have that you have a very large conference. When is your conference and where is your conference for 2013? This year it's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and I should have the dates, but it's the first week in July. There's okay. information about it on our website. Uh, it's relatively very cheap, um, but it's uh, we bring in national speakers. Temple Grandin will be one of the speakers this year. Great. Uh, and and we have uh, about a hundred sessions where um, are geared toward families, uh, individuals, professionals. Um, but it's also a lot of networking. People uh, get to see old friends when they come back. It's almost like a reunion. Uh, we have about 15, 1,600 people show up. Um, we'll do more this year because it's in the Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio area. There'll be some sessions that relate a little more to those type of uh, services. I mean, breakout sessions, that doesn't mean people from other states should not attend. Right. This will be a lot for them. But um, it, 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 its goal is that when someone leaves there, they're a better professional, they're a better parent, or they're a, a stronger individual with autism. Wonderful. And you also mentioned, too, that uh, a specific area of interest is uh, this idea of transitioning. And so often we encounter parents who are saying, you know, I, I don't know what to do. All my services dried up. I don't know what to do. And we know, of course, that autism is different depending on where you are in the world. And so for the mom in Kansas, it's different than the mom who's in upstate New York. And I think that one of the benefits, and, and I want you to speak to this, is that you have these affiliates all over the country so uh, I would imagine when somebody calls in and says, hey, here's what I need, that you guys are a little bit faster hookup because you, you have a little bit more of a beat on what's happening around the country. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, I, we had a call this morning. So someone was telling me about, and, and the call got referred to me, actually, because I spent some time in North Carolina. A parent in North Carolina with a, a daughter with autism was thinking of moving to another state mm -hmm. for a job. And we said, very honestly, you know, before you move, A, you're going to probably lose your Medicaid funding because it's not portable. Right. And the state you're going to has 19,000 people on the waiting list. <sighs> and and they could not get that information when they called the state's Department of Developmental Disabilities, which I don't understand why not, but I, I, I we hear that a lot. But uh, what we could say to people uh, is, like, if you're moving into this community, here's someone... Here, here's the local autism society. Go meet with them. Yeah, you know, they could say, "Look, it. You know, this is the this is the school system that that may be a little more responsive to your son or daughter than the other one." Or, right. Don't have this teacher. Have this teacher. They'll they'll, they'll give suggestions, and um, 
but they'll also make them welcome. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll usually hook them up with a mentor and get them involved in the community. Well, it's all great. I want to take another break. And when we come back, I want to talk to you about what the mission going forward is and what some of the, what you see from your unique viewpoint of what are the things that parents are asking for? Where is the most need um, moving forward? So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, uh, we'll have more with Scott Baddish from the Autism Society of America. Stick with us. Welcome back. Our very special guest right now is Scott Baddish, the president of the Autism Society of America. And he has been talking to us about this wonderful organization that we're going to be featuring this week and uh, about what they do and how you might connect with them as a parent. We, we've we been showing their website. We're going to show that again. But Scott, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what, what do you see moving forward? Autism has changed. Uh, uh, the way autism is treated has changed a lot in the last few years. What What's the next step for the Autism Society of America? Well, I think there's there's both an immediate next step, couple of years, and then there's a long term. Mm-hmm. The immediate one is, I think, is how do we uh, continue as a society to provide valued services in, in difficult financial times? Um, so I, I think uh, not only our agency, but all autism providers and families and individuals uh, need to get very involved in the, in, the, in the government, the advocacy, political discussion about you know, how do we use limited resources and, and how do we make sure that cuts don't come at the expense of the most needy? Um, so I think that's something we're more active in now than we've ever been active in. Um, and I think that will have ramifications for years to come, because as we know, when services get cut, they don't usually get restored. Um, I think what's ahead of us is part of that same discussion is how do you make a national how does the society really help someone with autism um, achieve their full potential? Uh, and how do we uh, assure that a person with autism is is not denied civil rights, uh, is denied everything that is entitled to everything that, that anyone else is? Um, and, and how do we get away from discussing autism as a service need um, to a, a, a condition that, that, that causes an individual to need some happy hands, in some cases a lot in others, but that that person is no less deserving than anyone else we as a nation have helped. Um, and I, I think we at the Autism Society are beginning to transition to those kind of discussions nationally, locally, and state about how autism has to be um, viewed as something that uh, you can't keep putting obstacles in the way of people and families as they try to succeed forward and that uh, our society puts way too many unnecessary obstacles in that path. Um, And I think you'll see more of the autism society moving to say, why are these things being put in the way? Why are people denied um, access to housing? Why are people uh, denied uh, access to a quality education on a regular basis by certain school districts? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I think you also see us taking the discussion of autism away from a human service, health service need to more of a societal need. you know, it, it's it's a it's a rapidly growing number, and um, it's it's uh, you know we 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 have got to start dealing with the bigger issues of high unemployment among people with autism. Yeah, uh, yeah. those no longer could be acceptable to us, and I think we're going to be taking the lead in those areas. Well, I'm looking forward to that. You had mentioned last year, you guys sort of put out a call and said there should be a summit. <clears throat> Excuse me a summit of all of the the different organizations are, are the key players in autism because it seems like even within our own community sometimes there's a certain amount of infighting and you know is this the message is that the message what do we want the message to be and you guys sort of stepped forward last year and and threw out this idea and said there should be a summit where all of the groups could sit down and be one voice and I know we got really excited about that because I think it's a brilliant idea have you ha- gotten any traction? Where are you on the summit? Um, there's a lot of infighting goes on. In our- <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, when I was naive to think that this would be an easy task, and it is, and um, <laughs> that's not any statement in any organization. Um, I before I retire, I'm going to get it done. Okay. Now, whether or not whether or not I'm 200 years old when I retire, I don't know. But but seriously. Um, I think we're seeing it starting to come together more. I think um, there exists a lot of dynamics in autism um, 
and we have bought and talked and had some meetings with some of the larger groups. And I think there's agreement that yes, we have to work together and we have to find things that we could all agree on and maybe disagree on other things, but there's certain things we could agree on. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying do this at the, at the expense of small and very important organizations, but I think we felt that we need to get the larger groups involved with autism to, to come to some agreements and, and, and then bring everyone else in and discuss how we could all come to some agreements. Right. Um, I, I think what we're finding in this process is that there's certain legislative actions that we could all agree on. Um, no one's going to argue that we shouldn't have a stronger uh, 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 restraint and seclusion uh, protection. Yeah. Um, no one's going to argue um, that uh, Medicaid costs, Medicaid cuts shouldn't come at the expense of the most needy. Um, but but then it starts getting a little more difficult. Someone may say this is a priority, and we'll say that's great, but it's not our priority, or it's not someone right. else's priority. Um, I think we also tend to have a, an agreement that I, at the interagency advisory council. Uh, is it, 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 it is a potential for greatness, but it's falling far short of that. And um, it's time that uh, we figure out how to make that work uh, for the betterment of everyone and not have it uh, all one-sided by government telling us what to do. Uh, I think that's something we could agree on. So I think this is a process that's going to take time. Um, but I will say that in the two years and so I've been here, I think the climate has never been better to have that discussion than it is now. It's just yeah. taking longer than I thought. Well, I appreciate your passion for the subject, and I want you to know that we here at Autism Live support this idea of having a summit, and if there's any way that we can help facilitate that uh, by, you know, helping <laughs> helping to get people at a table, because uh, we'd like to cover it, and more importantly, we'd like to see it happen. It's a thing whose time truly has come, and I think that everybody could benefit from it. So I want you to know that you have our support, and, and if there's anything we can do to help you, uh, we would be thrilled to. I, I would love it. I'd love you guys to come. And I, I, I'll give you exclusivity to it if I have any say. Well, and you know what? I, I sort of say, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't even need exclusivity because we hear about information. And, and if there's 35 other people who want to line up and cover it, too, I, I'm all good with it. Um, because at the end of the day, it is about getting people information. So, uh, But I appreciate it. That was very sweet of you. Um, but in any case, uh, sort of last question, what are the challenges? You know, you, you have this hotline and you have this space and you hear from people all over the country. What are the things that you hear the most often? Where are the greatest areas of need that you're hearing from parents currently? I mean, there's no question that the greatest need we hear from is, is uh, the total lack of adult services and, and the whole need for transition. Um, that's going to, you know, that's something we hear more and more about. Yeah. This, yeah. The second area that we're hearing increasing, getting more calls about is th this this division between the haves and the have-nots of uh, access to and receiving services. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's... Um, there's probably nothing worse for a family to find out that your child has autism and then not have any services in your community. And what we've been doing some work on is looking at where that disparity exists. You know, it's heavily based upon income, where there's uh, lower income areas don't have access to services. It's, it, there's a strong correlation between one's ethnicity or race about access to services. And we're starting to get calls about that. You know, um, my son was diagnosed or I, I'm seeing signs that my son may have autism, but I don't, there's not even a doctor in my community yeah. or a yeah. professional. Uh, how do I get help? Um, we're working with the CDC on some efforts at that and it's moving forward in a very good way. But, um, you know, this, the whole adult service is a really, it's a difficult task, but, um, you know, what happens to someone when they graduate high school or they leave, they become 21 uh, and the lack of services. And um, I think that that's, you talk to any national autism agency, they'll tell you that's the number one need. 
Well, I I can't thank you enough for being here and shedding some light on some, some different subjects for us. And I want to encourage all of our viewers to check out your website to see some of the different ways that they can get involved to get help and support. But also if they're further along and are in a place where they can be helpful and supportive, you guys are always looking for more people to be to work in your affiliate offices and and I would guess to open more affiliate offices. We love I mean, yeah, I mean we have, you know, 107 sounds like a lot, but there's a lot of the country we need volunteers to come together. Um, you know, my contact number, my contact information's on the website. Please contact me or contact anyone on staff. We'd love to work with you. If someone has a problem, they need help, they just need someone to talk to, give us a call. That's what we're here for. And and I, again, I want to thank you too. You guys are doing a great job. I know this, I've been on this show and I look forward to it. Um, but, you know, the ability of giving information both from a parent and a professional perspective, is so important. So God bless yeah. you guys for what you're doing. Well, and likewise to you. We're huge fans of what you do and hope that everybody participates and, and gets the help and support that they need. And you're a wonderful, wonderful resource. Please give our best to everybody there. And uh, and please keep us posted about the conference and because we'll make sure to cover it as we get closer to the date for the conference. We'll do it. Thank you again. And thanks for uh, highlighting us. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much.